the student loans, and there's some very specific things that you guys should do if you've just graduated on student loans. So if you guys have a bunch of student loans, for some reason, every term is a separate account. So if you pull your credit report, you just went through college, many times you'll see a separate account for every term. So you've got all these accounts on here. They're all like very close to the high balance, very bad. And they are installment, but it's not good. So here's the strategy. The first thing you want to do is get a consolidation loan. Okay, apply for a consolidation loan. That way you get all of these loans in one account. Now you're going to want to add other accounts. But get these things, and I see it all the time, and it kills your score like this too. So get these all in one account, consolidation loan, make the, make the application. As soon as you get the consolidation loan, apply for a deferment. Okay. Now the thing about applying for a deferment is keep making the payments, even though you think the deferment starts on June, keep making the payments till August. Because for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, maybe it's the government of work, right? Nothing ever gets done correctly with these things. It never gets done on the right date. So now you have a 30-day late on your, on your installment loan, and you don't have a lot of other credit, and it, it kills people. So uh, consolidation loan, deferment, keep making the payments well after the agreed-upon deferment date. Then add other credit cards like we thought. <coughs> So credit alert or credit freeze, how are we doing on time? Are we almost done? Uh, I think you're good. It's, do you guys have a 1245 okay. presentation, minutes. right? Yeah. All right, uh, credit freeze or fraud alert. Uh, a credit freeze actually costs you some money. You can go to the repositories. I have a freeze on my account. Um, it's like $15. You say, look, I don't want anybody to pull my credit at all. So if I went to pull my credit report outside of annualcreditreport.com, they don't get a file on me at all. Now, a fraud alert is just kind of like a note you put on the credit report that maybe somebody will read it or it won't, but it doesn't cost anything, and um, you know it shows up with the report. So you could say something like, anybody applying for credit using my information, please call to verify me at this number. Okay, many times they don't see it, they don't do it. But at least you have it on there. Who here is married? Okay. If you get divorced, the debt that you obtain together will still be yours no matter what the divorce decree says. Okay? So, many people, the divorce decree will tell you you're not responsible for the house debt. Well, that's fine unless you apply jointly for that loan so that individual stops paying his mortgage going on your credit report. Okay? No matter what the divorce decree says. I'm married Italian, so I don't. This is not an option for me. <laughs> right? Yeah. But anyway, so your credit is still married until death do you part. The Italian way. Okay. So business credit, real quick, is kind of becoming irrelevant. But there is a business credit database, DMV. You're seeing less people use it now than they used to because of the fallout. Of, you know, 0809. But it is out there. There's a database on businesses. It's available uh, through the PNB. Oh, okay. Disparate impact. Who, who here has heard of the CFPB? And Richard Cordray, recently uh, controversy over his appointment over the recess appointment that Obama made. They they created this new bureau. Okay, it's the highest paid bureau per individ, per employee at, in the government. And they are going after the lenders. And they're looking at disparate impact. Adverse effect of a practice or standard that is neutral or non-discriminatory in its intention, but not nonetheless disproportionately affects individuals having a disability or belonging to a particular group based on their age, race, or sex. Okay. So disparate impact is something that is not necessarily discriminatory but winds up being that way just because that's how, how it is. This is a government study on credit scores from 2007. Credit scores are not are, are different based on race and sex. Clearly women are better. I mean I, I knew that but women are better at, at managing your credit score when you're older. So there are some differences here. It now falls into this. 
So credit scores are a violation of the disparate impact rule that the CFPB has put up. So what's going to happen with that? I don't know. We'll find out. This is the last slide. Uh, there is a medical FICO score. Okay, so you all have a medical FICO score. Uh, it's not really used right now with healthcare, but they could use this score in the future, uh, and it will depend on what kind of service you get. So if you get a high medical FICO score, you might get pills, whereas if you have a low score, you might get a shot because you're less likely to follow the instructions. Everybody always seems a little horrified by that, especially you. Especially I You're Canadian? <laughs> My wife's Canadian, too. So we have the argument of socialized group all the time. But anyway, it is out there. I know it's scary, but what they're trying to predict is the likelihood that you will continue to take the medi medication as prescribed. Don't kill the messenger. This is not my idea. Yes, that, that so that's it. That's the end of it. Now, if you want more videos or free videos at my website, um, like I said, there's a ton of free information there. I don't like credit repair, but if you have a question like what credit cards are good for starting out, there's a video. On it. So that's it. Thank you, Dave.